Good to hear. Yeah. 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 What about you, Alex? What have you been up to, man? (laughs) Uh, I haven't been working. (laughs) I love it. I know. I'm I'm still in your life, man. No. Yeah. (laughs) You you know, it's a. It's it's something that I. it's, It's weird. I don't know how to explain it, but I was pretty adamant about not working. Um after after i got sick yeah um it, it's just something so, something happened to me um the way i saw life and like my perspective on what i was doing and uh just getting back into that grind you know um i don't know I, for being like in the hospital for so many months and don't going through so many rounds of chemo and well, so much time to think about and the unknown. Um, I think that that time frame really made me think different. And yeah. uh, somehow, somehow I've been able to manage it in five and a half years. I don't really know how, but yeah, um, that's crazy. I, I believe I believe <laughs> it has something to do with um, you know my 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 realization of um, like the spiritualness of life, Mm -hmm. you know, um, it's possible. It's very possible to, I mean, of course, I'm I'm pretty fortunate to have my mom uh, help me out and to be here with with my mom is, is, uh, is definitely not an opportunity that everybody has, Mm -hmm. but um, I, I think if anybody wants to just be out of this, the matrix or the, or the rat race or the grind or whatever you want to call it, it's possible. You know, um, if I had to, if I didn't live with my mom, I mean, I don't know. I I just, I just continue to reflect on life and, and work on manifesting. Um, and just because I'm not working doesn't mean I'm not, working towards something as a person and in life you know what I mean there's mm-hmm. there's I, I feel like I've advanced so much more in life over the past five years from not working than I than I ha- ever have while I was working yeah you know what I mean and I feel like it it it, it takes this m- like metamorphosis or this transition or this this uh this shift and um i feel like i'm just in the midst of this shift and if you if you have faith and you believe and you study the history of other people who have um you know been able to achieve whatever they desire in life they they had to go through some kind of a a change and a shift to get out of you know the what they're accustomed to being in yeah so sure. i don't know yeah i mean i don't i don't yeah go ahead <laughs> well i think i think um i think that when like because we went to our transplant and it's funny because i've had to so i've had to tell my story to this new the team that we like this new business that we kind of won kind of not but um it's a project that we're working on right and we i've had to introduce myself and the guy that is the main client he and i used to work together a long time ago but right when i got diagnosed so he's like he fully know and he's a good friend like he knows everything that i went through so i've had to um and he's been you know he's like i want you to share your story with when i introduce you to other people in in his organization and i said sure and so it's interesting because i've said the same thing like i think because we went through our transplant at in an in adulthood right and a little bit not necessarily like early 20s adulthood but you know mid 30s to you know that area it like when you come out of it you have you do have this pause right i mean brandon you were a kid so it was like you you wanted to get back to just regular life right and yep. we've talked about this where it's like rarely do you have a time in your adult life where you hit pause on everything and you have to focus on surviving 
and yourself. And, you know, there's a big part of me that didn't want to let go of that, you know, like, and I totally see what I, I, I admire and, and I envy, you know, the way in which you've done it, Alex. I, um, that's why I think like my headspace too, going back into work is very different than what it used to be. It's like, I need it to work for me if I go back into it, you know, like I can't just do the grind again. And, you know, it's kind of interesting, like in terms of how we experience it at different ages, how it affects these like big decisions later on, you know, but I think it's great. I like, I, I like where you, I, I think it's great that you're doing what you're doing and, you know, no, thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's I've, not not every not anyone can do it. That's for sure. No, I think yeah, and I think it's you know it's it's. I mean, one of the reasons I don't is because I'm too scared to like fully commit to that. You know. Um, yeah, I, I, I you know when I now that I think about it, I don't usually think about this, but uh, I I'm just like existing every day and just make you know just being present and getting it through every day very positively and um but you know when i do think about it like it, it's a it's a trade off you know I, I trade off getting uh you know compensation a salary money so that i can go out and do things that gives me pleasure Mm -hmm. You know, like go out and have fun and have a nice dinner and go out on a date and hang out with friends. And I don't know, but for me, I feel like um, the shift again, it's a, it's a shift in my mind. I, I, I value, I don't value those pleasures as much anymore. And I value more like true happiness and contentment. And, and I find that in, in being able to give myself, um, and it starts from my home, you know, the most closest person in my life, the person that gave me life, my mom. And I'm, I'm very blessed that she's here. You know, we all know, like, they're not always here forever and time is precious, you know, on this earth. And, you know, when I was sick and I thought I was gonna lose my mom by, going off to the next world it, it it made me realize all the money and possessions and going out and partying and like self-gratifying things are not what i would miss if i left this world yeah you know, it's it's how i treat my family and how i think about my life and how i want to change and become somebody that's better to serve the world and the people around me rather than just trying for a self-fulfillment of something that means nothing to me like when life and death is on the line mm -hmm. you know so I, I feel very fortunate again like I said not every everybody has the opportunity for me to have a mom that's here that has a house with extra bedrooms who's retired who could keep me here and give me shelter and give me food and whatever. But like I said earlier, it's, it's not like I'm at home going out every weekend or going out every day or just watching Netflix all day and, and wasting my life. You know, I'm right, literally right. taking this opportunity to really change myself and remind myself of what I said was important, you know, so that when when I'm faced with that situation again, where I'm going to, I'm going to leave or my family's going to leave or something dramatic, you know, crazy happens in life. I'll be more happy with myself mm -hmm. or more prepared to, you know, not have regrets. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not like I don't want to have fun anymore. I don't want to go out and I don't want to enjoy movies and party with my friends and go have drinks and make money and, meet somebody it's not like i don't want to do that it's just the way i was living before i got sick was so so uh um 
it was just so bad for myself. I felt like I lived in a very toxic way, in a toxic way of thought and a toxic way of, and, I, and I, I'm using, I'm utilizing this time to really change myself. Um, you could call it, yeah, you could call it, I'm sorry, what did you say? You're detoxing. Yeah, exactly. Detoxing, <laughs> calling it enlightenment, calling it a higher understanding, calling it finding, you know, inner peace, um whatever you know like I i'm learning to not be mad anymore at anything i'm learning to love everybody you know and these two things are just something i never used to do i'm learning to never ever argue I, I like i literally tell myself every day like i i'm with every situation i face no matter it's at home or outside in the world i'm, I'm gonna choose to be kind rather to be right, mm -hmm. to have an ego, to fight against somebody. You know, like, like we started off this, this, pod, this, this recording that everybody is so much negative shit going on in this world right now. Like it, it's, it's, it's causing me to even become more of whatever I was becoming the, the past five years to, you know, what can you really, really do to change this world is to first change yourself to mm -hmm. eliminate all of the toxins all of the hatred all of the ego all of the i hate this this politician or i hate you know this person or i can't believe this person did this to me at the supermarket or i can't believe my family member or you know whatever it is that any kind of negative vibe like i'm just i've been really and i'm surprised that that I feel like I've been making tremendous progress and I never thought I'd be able to reach this point, but uh, I'm reaching a point where I can literally turn every negative situation into something positive. And, and I believe that since I've been doing it for five years and it's, uh, it's you know, change is difficult and change takes time. And, and new ideas, like a whole lifetime of ideology and beliefs that I grew up with, like to change that at age 38, 40, to change that completely and become a totally different, you know, mindset, mentality, it, it takes time. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm really valuing this time to, to be able to do things like this to be with you guys and to be able to talk about this kind of stuff and and listen to Brandon doing all the amazing things he's doing and listen to you transitioning back into you know the the workforce um it, it just allows me to I feel like I, I'm in a great position to just really take a step back and and have that same perspective that I had when I was in the hospital mm -hmm. you know and, and I prayed to God or I prayed to the universe. I, you know, I said like, please just give me, just let me live again and have a normal day, like a regular day, wake up, brush my teeth, take a shower, take a walk, eat breakfast, eat lunch, you know, breathe, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like just have a normal day. I'm going to be fucking fully content and, 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 and I'm going to spread love and I'm going to, give i still i still enjoy pleasures and, and and indulgences you know don't get me wrong i'm just saying it's not about that anymore like people yeah. come first my mom comes first my family comes first like my priorities are different my mind yeah. like kindness over being yeah. right always you yeah. know if somebody wants to be a jerk to me i'm not gonna be a jerk back i i have the power i realize that i have the power to not respond to a jerk i have the power to not Re react to a, a honk or road rage. I have a, the power to not react when a family member is very being very stubborn or adamant about something that's clearly, clearly wrong. But I'm, I'm realizing there's no, I'm not, there's no need for me to feed into that energy. Like mm -hmm. I'm able to just, just like not let my ego get to me. People can just be. And I just, that's, that's the, 
that's the realization that I've been having and I've been living and I've been feeling every day. And, and you know, I'm striving and I feel like this is going to lead to me being able to give back to the world and, and make a living and not make a living, just live life in this way, mm -hmm. not having to work, to be able to just be and, and live. And yeah. not worry about how much money you make or because you we already have everything we have. If you really think about it, what do you really need to live? You need food, you need shelter, you need clothing, you know, whatever the essentials. But everything else, if you could see everything else is just your blessing that you can gain more of and give more of. Like and that's 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 the headspace where I'm at right now. I'm not yeah, I'm not trying to justify yeah. <laughs> No, and I'm, I know I, everything that you're talking about right now, I hope that the patients who are going through whatever they're going through, you know, treatment or post treatment, I hope they're having these same realizations that you're having, you know, they have like, and I know like once you get out, you want to like go back to your normal life. Like, yeah, but th this is the time, like there's nothing to do. Like this is the time to, you know, actually sit down and think about what life really means to you and what you truly cherish. And yeah, I, I hope that, you know, patients right now are, are thinking the same way you are, Alex. And um, yeah, because I, I know when I got out, none of this was going to, I was just like, let me do whatever I want to do. Even like when I got older, it's like, I still had that, like, I want to party. I want to, you know, yeah, just let it all out. It wasn't until maybe 10 years ago, maybe even less than that, where I came to those realizations, like, okay, now I have to realize, you know, what, what life, you know, truly means to me. And like, um, you know, what, what can I do to help others? Like, I didn't think about that until, you know, recently. Um, but it still happened to you. You still got yeah. there. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it think, took a little longer. But that's but subconsciously, okay. yeah, subconsciously uh, it, it was happening. Yeah. <laughs> understandable too, as a child, to go through this is different than an adult, you know, I mean. True, yeah. You're not, you're not gonna have these kinds of revelations. And, yeah, revelations. Yeah. But I think also patients, you know, you said like you want to get back to your normal and it's kind of like the whole, it's interesting because I think when the pandemic happened, everyone kept talking about a new normal, which to me was so funny because they're not funny, but I get maybe ironic, but it was like, God, I've been talking about a new normal for the last two and a half years because, mm -hmm. you know, when you go through the transplant, and, you know, you, regardless of age and mental state, you do have a new normal when you come out, you know, and you have to adjust to that and you have to make sacrifices. You have to, you know, you, you have also benefits of it, you know, like there's things that are good and maybe not as great um, about this new normal, but it's sort of interesting to see at a time like this where the whole world mm -hmm. is responding to a new normal on god so many different levels but you know it's it's funny i told i told already like now the world the rest of the world feels what we had to go through post transplant yeah. that it's oh. like i told her it was like ptsd when this yeah. happened i couldn't you know post transplant we couldn't go out no right mask. and then when you're finally able to yeah when you had to go out you had to wear a mask yeah and so when this whole thing started, the staying at home part was like, okay. But then when I had to go out wearing a mask, it was like, oh, I haven't worn a mask in what, so long. Like 20 years now for, you know? Uh, and so when yeah, I put it, I hate wearing it, just brings back, yeah, all those memories of having to walk yeah. out of the house with a mask. It's hot, you can't breathe, people looking at you, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah, you know, I guess I kind of had that feeling too, like the first few weeks of it, I kind of, you know, I saw like, 
in the very early stage of it, when no one was wearing, we didn't know much about what was going on, right? And I remember being in a mark in a supermarket, and I remember this woman walked in with a mask and gloves, and I kind of looked at her and I was like, "Geez, lady, like, what's up with this?" She was and probably Chinese. Like, I paused. And I'm like, "Oh my god." <laughs> This is, ex I was that person just because, you know, like because of what I went through. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and now, and then it became, and I, I actually, I have taken sort of a, um, a, I've, I've had a bit of like, I find a little bit of solace now in the fact that now when I go out and everyone's wearing a mask, I kind of feel like, all right, yeah, okay, okay, we can all do this, we can all do it, you know? I'm not the only one who has to wear this now. Cause I, I did, I used to feel the same way, Brandon. I was like, Oh, I don't want to go out and then have my mask on. Everyone's going to be staring at me. And it's like, you know, you, yep. you look like a freak, but now everybody's got the yeah. same thing happening. And now, Oh my God, I went out on a, on a, a jog and I felt so bad. Cause I, I was by myself. So it wasn't like I was with anyone. I was outside and it was, you know, it wasn't crowded. It was in my dad's neighborhood. So like no one's there, but, you know, I passed a few people walking, but I didn't have my mask on. And I literally felt like, I was like, oh, God, they're going to think I'm like an anti-mask person. And, you know, <laughs> like I felt horrible. So it was so funny to have that happen. But yeah, I think, I think it's like, yeah, a lot of patients who have already been through it probably felt the same way we did. Kind of like, ah, get a taste of what we've been through. Yeah. But, you know, I hope, I hope too, that the patients that are going through it now, you know, are, are feeling less alone that, that they have to have a new normal because everyone mm -hmm. has to have a new normal now. Yeah. And, yeah. That's very true. You know, I mean, I don't know if it provides them any kind of source of comfort. It provided me a little bit of source of comfort of just kind of like, okay, we're, we're all going through this. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to to have this happen and be on the post transplant side. It's a very strange um, experience, really. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's been interesting, and it, and and it's also funny because I find myself like sometimes judging people when I'm like, you know what, that's actually not really going to help you because like, you know, I've seen a lot of people where they have their gloves on in the supermarket, but then they're like taking out their phone, they're touching their phone, then they're touching their face and then they're doing all this other stuff. And I'm like, yeah, well, th then you're defeating the purpose of the gloves right now because you're touching all this other stuff. Like that's going to eventually your phone is going to touch yourself again, you know, but I find myself thinking I'm like an expert in this world, you know? I'm like, oh yeah, well, I know what an N95 mask is. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I have those, but I didn't order them. You know, I already had them. <laughs> I know, I think my mom even busted out, you know, like the, the green, blue yeah. looking ones? The green, yeah. white ones? Yeah. yeah. My mom had, she kept them from when I was sick. She had a stash of them, so she brought them out. Wow. She nice. like, that we would have to use these again. Yeah. So funny. I had a whole, I had a whole stash too. So I gave everything to my family and it went right when like no one could get any masks, you know? Uh -huh. And I was like, okay, just be careful when you wear these things. Cause you don't want to be mislabeled as someone who ordered it when the first responders are really needed it. Like <laughs> it wasn't even a sign that says like, I already had this. I already had it. But yeah. I was also thinking like, just think if we created these masks, like, you know, how, like the nice, if we made our own back when we were sick and then started selling them and started a business. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> yeah. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah, who would have known? Who would have known? I know. That's just how unpredictable this, this world is. And yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm always marveling at just, just the constant change of of the world of the, of the climate the you know the the shift in the minds of people and all the chaos right now and yeah um but you know i i always think people throughout history always say like 
after chaos comes, you know, peace and tranquility. And then after a long time of peace and tranquility, there, there comes chaos. And right. it's kind of like the cycle of life. And um, I think the most important thing we can do, and especially if you're going through cancer, um, is is to keep yourself uh in the red in the right headspace you know um yeah. just gotta see the bigger picture you know as weird as the weird goes and as, as evil as the stuff you see on tv like um i believe we're always moving in the right direction but good and evil is always going to exist in the world and you have to believe that you know in times of evil there's or not evil, not necessarily evil, but difficulties or whatever. There's mm -hmm. definitely a, you know, clear, clear skies behind it or silver lining or. Yeah. But yeah. Well, we've talked about the mental health, you know, headspace being so, um, so transformative in our experiences of healing, right? And, and survival. And I think that you know, I think actually this year has kind of given the general population, you know, an experience of turmoil. Yes, that, a good dose of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a very good dose of it. And, <laughs> and you see that a lot more of people talking about, you know, mental health and, you know, serving yourself in terms of what can elevate you in a positive way right and how you can help each other and how we can come together and you know there's a lot even though there's all the messages on the opposite side of that but i i think the majority of people you know are leaning towards like we, we can be there for each other we can you know help each other be kind to each other and you know and have a more of a positive approach to to it and it's sort of like that's the same mentality you have to have when you face these this illness or any illness that puts you in any kind of medical crisis and you know it, it's kind of like hopefully these sentiments because it's been raised on a global scale hopefully it sinks in a bit more and like more and more people practice that you know and more and more focuses on that and more and more um, you know, uh, uprising is, uh, is in that direction of, of being, of being there for each other, of connecting, of, you know, positive things and, and also like taking care of yourself as well. You know, I mean, I hope, I hope all of that is on the trend and continues to be in that direction, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. It's, yeah, it's very interesting to be, you know, I think our unique perspective as survivors is sort of like, I think the rest of the world will come out of this feeling a little bit like we did when we came out of our transplants, you know, like survive it. We survived it. We survived mm -hmm. it. We've, and we're going to be better for it, you know? I mean, I hope that that's the way it happens. And I, I, I believe that, you know, that everyone's going to say, we're going to be better for it, you know, hopefully. <laughs> I hope yeah. so. Yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's for sure going to get better. It's um it always gets better. The world is not getting I I don't believe the world is getting worse, you know. Um people might be debating more about shit, but I I don't know. I think humans and human civilization where we're always advancing you know we're going to keep on advancing until we blow up <laughs> right well I, so, think, yeah, I agree i think i think that as a whole humans we're going to advance i think that to advance though is to go through the growing pains where you do yes. have people who don't who who do see only negative or who bring up painful things or you know i mean we're not going to get into politics on this you know platform but i think that 
overall, if you took like a pulse of everyone in the world combined, yeah, you know, we we're all wanting to like be in a better place and support each other and inclusiveness and all that kind of stuff. Whereas the negative stuff that we hear so much of is just so amplified, you know, it's like a small portion, but it feels large because it's getting an amplification on social media or, you know, whatever, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, I think if we took social media away, it would actually be so wonderful. <laughs> yeah. You know? we, we've talked about social media and, and I, I, you know, you, you bring it up. I still truly believe social media kind of like our, you know, like, our brain is it's you could either use it for mass destruction or you could use it to heal the entire world mm -hmm. you know like it, it's a yep. it's a better yourself like, and we're, others we're, yeah i mean like like we we can go on to log on right now and go on whatever social media platform and write a really positive inspiring message and share it to the world um and and you know believe me it's gonna affect somebody like it's yeah. uh and then if everybody in the world does that can you imagine like the power of of that you know so i, I think it comes down to being able to individually like individually spread awareness and the word and the righteousness and, and love and 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 you know equality and harmony and you know all that good stuff mm -hmm. and you know spread it if, if, if we constantly spread it it's going to continue to spread exponentially and mm -hmm. um yeah. yeah it's possible um, <laughs> i i have a question for you guys because this happened to me so um with uh with the pandemic did you guys have you had like have you found yourself to be like overly concerned about, you know, going out, getting sick? No, Brandon, you're shaking your head. No, no. I mean, I take it serious. Yes. But as far as like, it's going to stop me from living my life or doing what makes me happy. And like, no, like I still go out. I play golf still, uh -huh. you know, I, go to if i need to go to the store like i'll go like it's not stopping me uh -huh. from because i feel like what we went through is so much worse than what's going on uh -huh. um i just feel like this is nothing yeah, it's it's yeah not like like i'm invincible like i it can't you know i'm not gonna get it but it just doesn't have the same um Weight? I don't know. Yeah, the same weight as, you know, what we went through. Interesting. I've had the opposite um, experience. I feel like I've become more paranoid. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you're, I think, because you're, what, two years out now? Yeah, two and a half years. Yeah. Is that? It's been like, I haven't, I mean, I go to the market, you know, I wear my mask. I know what I can mm -hmm. do, but like, I have had moments of like panic of like, I do not want to get this, this virus because I do not want to go back into the hospital. Mm -hmm. And it scares the shit out of me. And I've like, I've had these conversations with Mark because, you know, we have, he has Harry and he's, Harry's 19 and he was home, you know, from college because every college sent the kids home and like, so, you know, it's like, and Harry's really good. He's, he's one of the, you know, he's a young kid who's like taking it seriously like you, you know, he's like, I take it seriously, but I still live my life. So he's still going to see, you know, friends here and there. It's not like he's going to parties, but like, mm -hmm. you know, he sees friends. So it's like, we've had this conversation where I have had moments where I'm like in a panic and I'm, and I'm like, you know, worried about exposure and I feel like it's like a PTSD thing. It's like, 
I have PTSD from being in the hospital. hospital. Yeah. You know, it wasn't comparative to, to other patients. It wasn't that long. I mean, I'm only in there for a month, but I don't know. I, I'm, I'm struggling with like how to like, you know, feel less concerned about going out, you know, maybe to like a restaurant that has outdoor seating. I mean, I have been a couple times, but I, I get like anxiety when I go, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that is like, and I'm not saying it's particular to people who have, are post transplant. Cause I know there's plenty of people who are, you know, have anxiety about the virus too, but, um, you know, I don't know. I just have found myself like, I haven't really seen any of my friends, you know, because of that. And I just, it's been a strange experience. And I want, you know, I'm sure other patients that are new, more new, either newly out or in it right now have, you know, the same kind of concerns. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I did. I don't know. I didn't know how you guys felt about it. And, and it's interesting to hear you guys kind of say that. And it makes me feel a little better to be like, okay, maybe I should live my life a little bit more the way I want to, you know? Still uh, being safe. Yeah, still yeah. being safe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, in my mind, I just feel like nothing equates to, like, cancer. Mm -hmm. in, in my mind, that's what it feels like. Interesting. So I'm like, yeah. Yeah. No, I see that. I see that. Yeah. Totally get it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not gonna go to a movie theater though right now. I can tell you that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I I still take it serious. I I still try to stay like six feet away from people when I go out. I still wear my mask, and not like I'm going out. Like I don't give a fuck. I'm not wearing my mask. Like yeah. I I still take it serious enough where yeah. I take all the necessary precautions. But yeah. just in my head, I feel like nothing equates to yeah cancer, bone marrow transplant, yeah. yeah, GVH, all that stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally get it. Yeah, no, Chrissy, I, I think, um, and Brandon, I think everybody has a different degree of comfort or discomfort with this virus because it's invisible. Mm -hmm. And it's, we're only getting our information through the media. And no, and then it depends on your degree of how much of the media you believe, um, and and you base it on your own personal experience, and you base it on what you hear and and, and the people around you, and um, and what I've noticed, and especially in my family and friends, that everybody has varying degrees of what's comfortable and okay and what's not, you know, like going to the pool or going to somebody's house or going to uh, traveling or going on an airplane or going to the casino or going to the park yeah. or running. Everybody has a different, and you know, and this person says, yeah, you can't do that. But then yet they're doing this, that this person says, you can't be doing that, but yet they're doing that. So, uh, and I, I think it's just, uh, I think you're, because it's unknown, um, I think Brandon's doing the right thing by living his, his, you know, just being precautious, but not being too paranoid about it. But I think being paranoid about it is good too, because you're protecting yourself from something that's invisible and you don't really know like what's going to happen, you know? So I don't know. I think the most important thing is just to, do what makes you feel comfortable yeah um d during this you right. know during this time and then once it's over then everybody there won't be so many varying degrees of how people feel about what's yeah outside outside of our doors you know then it'll normalize but yeah yeah i think uh yeah nobody knows there's there's no right or wrong right now like people who stay home all the time and are super germaphobic are right. Yeah. People who are going out and really, I'm not saying the people who are going out to parties and not wearing masks and, and, and you know, get large gatherings are, are right. But I'm saying 
um, yeah, use, use your own judgment um, yeah. wisely, right? Yeah. And I, I don't think you're overthinking it. And I don't think Brandon's excessively over not thinking. Right. <laughs> It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we're, we're oh. just, well, I have faith in you guys to be, you know, well, very, you know, you guys know what you're doing. Well, it's another <laughs> and, lesson in like you can't control <laughs> anything outside of really you, right? Yeah. And it's like a lesson we had to learn going through this, going through the transplant, post transplant, like you can only control yourself, you know, and so it's like another, le another lesson in that space of like you just got to do you you know without yeah. endangering anyone else you know yeah, i think that's um, most yeah. important like you said as, as long as you know that you're not you know yeah i still don't want to get tested else, yeah just right. to be safe yeah 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 and i'm very cautious around people like i'm i'm always asking them are you okay with me like you know wearing a mask or not wearing a mask or or being too close to you or, you know, I, I don't know. I, I just try to, in every situation when I'm around people, I try to be respectful of how people feel. You yeah. Know, because I realize everybody feels differently. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that from you guys. Yeah, yeah, just do what makes you feel comfortable and safe. Put myself um, in trouble. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, live that again. Being I in a bubble. Right. <laughs> I've already been there. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, a bubble is not necessarily a bad place to be. Like, like <laughs> yeah. Earlier, you know? Yeah. You know, it's a it's an opportunity. It's it's always an opportunity to to be better, to advance, to you know get somewhere further in life inside you know inside out that's that's how totally. life is totally like, you know but oh well on that i note. don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah because you're yeah. the ghost soon, right chrissy yeah i gotta go soon yeah okay I'm gonna finish up some work stuff so yeah it's two minutes yeah. yeah, this is nice that we All should right. do this like every other week. Well, just hop on for an hour, just uh, yeah, you know, get out what we need to, and yeah, you know, for sure, give some insight on for those who are going through some stuff. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Any help? Yeah, no, me? it's really great seeing you guys. Are you, are you not at home, Chrissy? No, I'm in my dad's. Oh, okay. Yeah, this yeah, is it didn't didn't look like home. No. Yeah. There's no trees or plants. In so the... <laughs> this was my brother's room when we were growing up, um, but I made it into my office because my old room got turned into my dad's office. Uh, and then we made this room more of like a guest room, you know, since we, none of us live here. But so there's a desk in here and it's easier for me to like work during the day without being at home with Mark. Um, and I don't want to be at home with him all day long, so <laughs> I feel like he's, um, no, I mean, it, I love being with him, but yeah, it's like, you know, in a, in a, in a loft with no doors, it's like hard to work kind of. Oh yeah, it's true. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. I'm on calls and like all that stuff. So it's good to kind of have this space, but yeah, so yeah. I'm here right now. Um, Oh, we moved. Did I tell you guys that? No. You and Mark? You're not. Yeah. Oh, no, no you didn't. You're, you're not in downtown LA anymore? No, we are. We're just like further in the arts district now. Oh, okay. You're yeah. closer to where my sister lives. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, so part of arts district. Um, You know where Bestia is? Do you know where Bestia yeah. is? So we're in the complex that Bestia is in. So ah. our cross street is Santa Fe Avenue and 7th. Uh-huh. Like the main, like if you're, um, what would be another big, there's like, I mean, we're a block away from the Soho house. I don't know if you guys know where that is. I didn't know where that was until we moved there. Um, well, I definitely know where Bestia is. 
So. Yeah. So seventh and Santa Fe. So we're like, I mean, essentially we're at the junction of the 10, 60 and the five. So yeah. You were, mm -hmm. you were heading on the 10 East and you get to that interchange and there's that massive, big, like cement building that has the three purple stripes. Uh -huh. And it says like DHL or dependable yeah. or whatever. Like we're like right in that kind of area. We're just north of that. Uh, cool. Yeah. It's a cool area. It's like totally, uh, it's completely developed up and it's like, there's some really cool restaurants. There's some really cool, um, you know, stores. I mean, of course everything's shut right now, but like it's, it's a really neat area. And yeah, they definitely uh, gave that area a facelift. That's for yeah. sure. Uh, and they've put, they, there's so much that has been put in to the development of it. Um, but it, it's cool. So when, you know, we have like an outdoor barbecue area too, which is nice because we didn't have any outdoor space at the last place, you know? Mm -hmm. So maybe we could do like an outdoor barbecue kind of thing. You guys come over one time and we can see, we can see each other in person. That'll be great. Looking, yeah. looking forward some, to that. Yeah. Some humans in person. Right? <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, we'll do that soon. But yeah, I think we should what? we should do another recording soon. And yeah, it's just easy yeah. and it's easy to record. Or if yeah. you guys just want to zoom and hang out, that too. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's fine too. Yeah, <laughs> I like talking to you guys. Me too. Me too. Yeah, it always makes me feel better. Me too. Me too. You always remind me to be a better person, Alex. So. You're put your yeah. your man remind me to be more work, zen. Yeah, your work is having <laughs> a really good effect on me personally, just so you know. So it well, is thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You guys definitely have a positive effect on me too. So so it all goes around, you know. Yep, it sure does. Yeah, it does feel good. It's like I think we said in the previous episodes, like talking to someone else, they don't have the same, they don't get it, you know. So talking to you yeah. guys, it's like Kind of like a breath of fresh air, like ah, oh, people who understand me and under yeah. know what right. I'm thinking. Right, so. I know, I know, I totally agree, totally. Agree. Yeah. yeah, you guys don't think I'm too weird. No, <laughs> no. You're, yeah, like yeah. My own, you're like my own personal Dalai Lama. I like it. Yeah, if anything, we Thanks. we envy you. Yeah. You call me Ali Lama. <laughs> I just might. I just might. I love it. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, boys. All right. Well, it was great to see you guys. Take yes. care of yourselves. Be safe. You too. Yes, you guys be Alex, safe too. Give your mama a hug for me. I Brandon, will. Artie, I Thank say you. hi. I will. She just got home yes. from work. So. Cool. All right. Yeah. Yep. Say hi to Mark. Say Mark too. I will. Yeah. Okay. No, see you guys. All right. All right. See you guys. See you guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye.